So what I want to do is I just want to give you a brief introduction to Good Energy. So who are we? we? What do we do? Then I will share with you my view on the PV industry. And I will tr try to explain to you and to myself why I'm still looking at the PV industry. So Good Energies, um, we are investing in clean tech. We have three teams, two investing in infrastructure and energy investments in Northern America and Europe and one global VC team to which I belong. And the venture capital team focuses on renewable energies, on energy efficiency, green buildings, clean transportation, and smart grids. And on the right side here, you see a selection of our portfolio companies. And as you see, we are still heavily inv invested in photovoltaics. And we started to invest in photovoltaics in 2002, so before most of the investors. And we experienced the gold rush in the industry. So when many investors rushed into photovoltaics, attracted by very high growth rates, very high margins, and they were looking for gold. And as a result, they invested quite a lot of money, as you see here, where you see the amount of venture capital and private equity money, which went into the various technologies. And you see a first uh, wave of investments in 2006, 2007, in crystal and silicon technology. And in 2007, 2008, all the investors who missed the crystalline train, they, they rushed in and jumped on the synfilm train. And I think they invested in business plans, very ambis ambitious business plans, with yeah, quite optimistic assumptions on development phases and very aggressive ramp up plans inside. And I think that many investors who invested in Symfilm at that time didn't really understand the risk they are taking. So what did the companies do with all the money they got? By the way, so Crystalline collected about $4 billion over the last five years, and Symfilm also collected $4 billion, 4.7 over five years. And I think the best way to look at it, what the, what the companies did with the money, is to, to look at the products which are shipped. And you see that the Crystalline guys uh, they built up a lot of production capacity, and they are able to ship product and sell it to the market. So about 85% of the PV market is uh, crystalline silicon, based on crystalline silicon technology. And the investments in 2006, 2007 also initiated the shift of the industry to China. So a lot of money went there. The Synfilm guys who got about the same amount of money, if you take out um, first solar, so the cattle bar down there, um, they don't show up in this graph. So they got $4 billion money, and they're not shipping any products. So something went wrong. And I think the first thing which went wrong is that, well, the business plans were based on two optimistic assumptions on development phases and on ramp-ups. And uh, the, the companies and the investors, they didn't look in, into the past. They didn't look at first solar, what they did in the first year. So it took some years and about 100, 150 million to reach a state where they can copy smart and start the success story. Or other companies like Kanaka and Synfilm Silicon, who also well, needed four or, years to develop their, four or five years to develop and scale up their technology to a level where they can ship products. And most of the business plans at that time were assumed something like 18 months from a cell like that size to a module of that size being in the market. So it just didn't work. I have to say, uh, the bad thing is that some companies who uh, collected more than 100 million of investors' money, they are not shipping products today. So many investors and banks lost trust in thin film. A second problem which these guys faced was the fact that their investments decision were based on cost forecasts like this one. And so at that time, People thought that Synfilm is disruptive and will have a significant cost advantage versus uh, crystalline silicon. Unfortunately, these predictions were wrong. So the real production costs of crystalline silicon came fa faster and further down than expected uh, in 2006. And this is a problem for the Synfilm players. They are on their learning, on their route, so they are not missing their cost curve, but it's just too slow. And I tried to figure out if this cost reduction in silicon technology came as a surprise or not. And I plotted uh, 
the data over the last, yeah, I think starting in 83. So the dark blue dots, they represent the costs which have been published. And the light blue one are the prices at we, from Paula Mintz, Navigant Consultant, at which the products are sold in the market. And you see uh, that um, you have an 80% learning rate, and that today's costs of the best uh, Chinese manufacturers, which I plotted on the right side, the dark blue point on the right side, they are still exactly on the learning curve. So the industry didn't do anything surprising. And if you zoom in a little bit closer, you see that it actually the development we saw is just a textbook-like behavior as it was predicted by the Boston Consulting Group for the introduction of new technologies. So you've, in the beginning, you have a development phase where prices and costs are at the same level. Then at a certain point, the product gets traction in the market. So people are buying it, the price is stabilized while you continue to reduce the costs. So the margin increase, and that's what we saw in 2005-2006, then this attracts more companies, more players uh, joining the game. At a certain point in time, somebody who made his homework, and the Chinese did that, will decide that, well, it's time to kick out the unloved uh, competition. And I think this decision was triggered by the financial cri cri crisis in 2008. So the financial crisis was not the reason for them to do it, but was just the right point, the trigger point to do it. And so the, they dropped the prices and caused a lot of problems for new entries who were not on, as far on the learning curve. I think going forward, we will see a shakeout in the industry. I think it, it, we, it's not done yet. It will continue. And then we will see a stabilization of prices. And again, decent margins in the industry, this business will be commoditized. An interesting point, I think, is uh, shown here. So here I plotted just data from First Solar, which they published on their costs. And what you see is that they are on a, that Christian Silicon's on a faster, steeper learning curve than First Solar. So these guys might have problems because they have a disadvantage on the BOS side, on the balance of system costs, because they have uh, lower efficiency, so they have to add more steel on, and more ground to get to the same output. And if you add on something like uh, a disadvantage of 40 cents, and you see that in a few years, it will be very difficult for First Solar to m compete with Christian Silicon if, if they cannot accelerate or get the efficiency up significantly. And I think the second problem for new entrants in the market w was caused by the financial crisis, and this is the total amount of project finance which went into solar projects. And you see that after the uh, financial crisis here, project financing dried out. What is not shown here is that especially debt financing became a problem in 2009 and early 2010. So the equity investors came back quite early, so it took them about six months to figure out how the world would look like after the financial crisis. They saw that investing in solar and PV plants is an interesting business, but the banks still shied away, and I think project financing just picked up in the last quarter of 2010. And this caused several severe problems for startups with new companies. Because on one hand, you have a product which is not proven in the market, which doesn't have a track record in the field. So people will tell you that there is a high perceived technology risk. It's not a, in most cases, it's not a real technology risk, it's just per the perception of uh, the people who give the debt financing. And they have a lot of projects to be financed with conventional technology, which they know well. And in 2009, the standard statement I got from bankers was, well, why should I look at that? I don't have any benefit from investing or financing Synfilm or CPV projects. I just do uh, Christian Silicon unless I have a good customer who really with a long-term relationship which I want to please, and then I might do a Synfilm project or CPV project. The second problem for startups is the fact that they had, or have, most of them have weak balance sheets. So the warranties given by these startups may be challenged. So this results in limited bankability for projects with these products, less favorable conditions, and at the end, well, if you invest in an early phase in the development of a project, you might want to refinance it later and sell it to an investor like a pension fund. 
And hope, hopefully, at least I hope that for my pension fund, they are more risk averse than I am. So they will rather shy away from new technologies and uh, they don't want to take any technology risk, even if the IRR is okay. <laughs>